Hi, I'm Tom Hollingsworth. Welcome to Networking Field Day. We're here in Mountain View, California at the offices of VeloCloud. The presentation that you are about to watch features VeloCloud's products and solutions and a group of networking community delegates who are invited to ask questions, make comments, and offer their opinions in front of a recorded video. If you would like to learn more about this and other exciting topics, including how to become a delegate or a presenter at the event, please go to our website at techfieldday.com. If you'd like to watch more videos about this and other exciting technology topics, please see our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash techfieldday. Hi guys, my name is Fan Gu. I'm from the product management team. And today I will take a couple of minutes to walk through the uh, disaster recovery uh, with you. So for the large customers, large customers who have the data center deployment, one of the thing, key things that they, um, they concern is about the disaster recovery. So I have a data center today in my east coast. How do I have a, a disaster recovery possibility if I, uh, to, to deploy? So I probably have a, uh, another data center in the west coast. So, so that in case the east coast is down, my, I can bring, still have all my deployment in the west coast available. This is one case when there's a real disaster, or in another case, uh, they probably want to plan for a, a major construction in the East Coast. They probably want to migrate everything to the West Coast. So that is another scenario for the disaster recovery need. Um, so, what, but uh, there are a couple of um, issues with the traditional disaster recovery, right? It's slow, so it takes some time. Uh, for the uh, disaster uh, the recovery setup to, to be made. And also the f uh, there, there are split brain, split brain behavior, which is quite common that uh, the operators want to mitigate or avoid. And how do I make sure I have the minimum data lost when I do this disaster recovery? So our design is uh, we made this uh, disaster recovery setup simple, one click, and I will walk you in a demo. And also, we uh, mandate the manual, be a manual change on the standby uh, for the recovery side, uh, for, the, for the disaster recovery, so that we will avoid the split brain. We also build in intelligence in the uh, VCO, the orchestrator, as well as the edges, to make sure that everything only recognize, all the edges or gateway only recognize one VCO at a time. It won't uh, have the split brain behavior. And also, we are backing up the database constantly so that there is no configuration difference between these two. And we have the five second check, status check between these two to make sure they are in sync. So as an operator, now, um, how does it work? Uh, assume that I'm an operator of the data center. And today, I have one uh, VCO <laughs> in the east coast, uh, west coast. And I have all my branches and the cloud gateways talking to me. Operation is fine today. And tomorrow, I want to bring up another data center in the East Coast, VCOB. Um, now let's walk through what, <coughs> what the operator would do. So the initial status is standalone, standalone. So these two, it, the, stand, uh, the VCOB, it doesn't have to be a new VCO. It could be some existing VCO that you have. But uh, the key point is they need to be in a standalone row. So over here, you will see the row changes as uh, we progress. There, the standalone is the initial status. And when they become a disaster re uh, recovery pair, they will be active and standby. And when things happen, it could be a zombie and uh, back to a standalone. We'll work, work over that. So now I have an operating uh, de deployment. And now I would like to do the pairing. So the operator would do two things, simple. One is log into the standby VCOB to initi uh, initiate the, uh, the DR to make it uh, standby. And on the, standby, uh, on the VCOA, which is original stand standalone, I will enable it to be an active. At this point, what happens is the B will recognize A, and they will, uh, they will establish a tunnel and start the data replication as that is changed. And all the edges, they will get the message, and they will start to talk to both v, uh, VCO A and B with the DR status. So the edges will know who is my active, who is my standby. And tomorrow, I want to make a VCO B, the data center, uh, VC, uh, the data center with VCO B to be an active to, uh, for my data center migration. So what I, we do is the operator will log into the VCO B and manually change it to, the to promote the standby. 
So now the VCOB become the new standalone, which is the operational uh, VCO. And all the branches will get this message. Oh, I need to talk to VCOB. So they will talk to the VCOB. And for the VCOA, we introduce the, the zombie role. So what that is mean that it, it knows that uh, my standby has been promoted as the as the new VCO. So I should not talk to take any actions. I should not replicate the data, and I should not uh, take actions uh, for the for the edges. No configuration change, or the database change. So the VCOB will be the new one, and uh, all the edges they will only talk to B. So these are the high very high level. Now let's go to the UI to uh, show to see how it works. Um, okay, how do I make this? Uh, Like, I need to bring up here. So now I bring up the side by side <coughs> VCO. This is my original VCO in the slide, and this is the VCOB. You can see there's some data already over here, but uh, it's on purpose. So we show that at the background, the VCO, uh, the DR, when it happens, it will wipe out our database and replicate from the active to the standby. So. Uh, these are the uh, existing customers set up in the VCOA. And now we go to the replication tab. Oh, I need to log in. So I go to this replication page. And as you can see, there are two rows, active or standby. Right now, these two are, are standalone. So on the standby, as we said, we make this standby. You intentionally enable for standby and click standby. And it will ask you, it will prepare for this standby row, and it will wipe out the, all the data in this, uh, in this VCO. We say OK. successfully. It will provide its own IP address and orchestrator uh, UUID, which will be needed on the VCOA, so that VCOA <coughs> can log into the, uh, to the standby to, uh, to push the configurations. So make it active, and we need to copy paste. This is a, a auto configuration uh, configure standby. So we have another option. So right now, I click Make Active. And on the background, there will be a tunnel established between these two. And you will see the status change. This is one way of doing this, where the VCO initiate the uh, connection. And if there is firewall between these two, we can also do the manual configuration where when we select a manual configuration, you will have a hash key that uh, have all the combinations that we will need to, uh, we can just uh, copy paste into the standby. 
and all the status is shown over here. It goes, these two sh uh, are, should be identical, and uh, the status change uh, from the standby candidate to the configuration, and it will start the copy database and the copy files. It depends on how much data do we have initially on the uh, standalone. It may take some time, but here um, it should be. <coughs> And after the, those uh, status are cha changed and uh, these two are in sync, you will see the status on, the, on each of the page under the replication tab. So now these are paired and uh, the status uh, at state we, should, we see as in sync. It means that all the, replica all the data on the VCOA is replicated to, to the uh, standby. And, uh, it, it, it gives you the option to log into the active uh, VCO. And it also shows how many uh, edges are talking to me at this moment. And we also have the uh, option to change the status. And one thing to note is that on this, you can see the difference. On these two VCO, when we log in, the VCO B, which is standby, there is no configuration that you can do from the UI. So this is a read only. So the status we will see is the state, which is cur current state, which is in sync, in sync now, and when was it last, uh, when was verified last time. And as we said, we, it's five second uh, status ch uh, check. And we see, oh, A, over here, the configuration, we can do any, any configurations. And uh, assume that we can probably um, add a new customer, dummy customer. So we call it customer five, let's call it six. In this case, it's the same. So the username. Password. Confirm. And uh, That's it, very simple. So now we have a new customer. So we added a customer six. So the next I would like to show is a scenario where we want to enforce the uh, VCOB as the primary, uh, as the active uh, VCO or um, for the uh, data center migration scenario. So we go to VCO B and promote standby. So it will tell, it will detect that I have, you have a, already have an active orchestrator. Are you doing this on purpose or it's a mistake? It will warn you and uh, we are, because it's uh, intended migration, so we will say okay. Now what happens is it will log, log back in. Uh, now what happens is it will promote itself as a standalone. So as we said we, we, in our slides, when we do the peering, the, the active standby, and when we promote one of these uh, standby as the active, it means that we are gonna bre break the DR and make it, uh, this a standalone. Let's log back in. Um, it, I think it just logged back up, uh, log us out. Okay. Let's refresh this page, see what, what's changed. See now, as a new standalone VCO, which is a functional VCO, uh, it replicate all the data and all the edges, they will automatically talk to this, uh, talk to this VCO. And on this uh, original active, <coughs> it become a zombie. It won't do anything. It won't do application. It won't accept configuration change. Um, and when the when I see the VC, the address talking to talking to uh, him, uh, he will say, "Oh, hi, sorry, that you have a new VCO. You should talk to this VCO." So this way, there is no split brain. And uh, from now on, if we want to pair it again, 
then we will get, we can return to standalone and make it uh, active. So we restart this DR pairing as we um, we do from the uh, beginning of this demo. Okay, so I'm wrapping up uh, this uh, VCR. Uh, VCO demo, and the message here is we made the VCO um, DR <laughs> easy, simple. Okay, thank you.